Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. It was your birthday this weekend. Everybody say happy birthday to Hi, Beatrice. I'm old. You're not old. You're just getting old. I'm almost 30. I'm 28. That's, well, I mean, 30s, the 30s are a great decade, honey. Girl. And the 40s are even better. I promise. Uh, 50s? Not so much. <laughs> not so much. Kind of going downhill from there. Okay? Great. Can't wait. 20s sucked for me. Yeah. I don't like my 20s. Such a chaotic decade. Not fun. Not knowing anything. How do I establish myself? Where do I want to work? I have to be oh, an adult. How do I figure that out? Fuck this. 30s is a little bit better because you're supposed to have your shit together, but nobody really does. <laughs> but you're a little bit more mature. You don't go to the club no more. I've never been to the club. No, you haven't. So no. you settle down. Yeah. And you start enjoying your life. So... You're getting older, and I oh, love yeah. that for you. Happy birthday, belated. Thank you. Uh, All right, we are here to talk welcome to Plathville, and also unexpected for those of you who have been asking, and there have been a lot of people like, bitches, yeah. raccoons, don't you start a show and not end a show. No, we're still watching. Sorry. It just depends on how long we go with welcome to Plathville. But and we forget. Well, she forgets. <laughs> um, tonight, we will definitely do the catch up and the recap yeah. for Unexpected. Before we get into that, we do have to tell you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. We have stupid opinions. And yeah. so if you're so sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dump. The baby. But if you're down to party and talk about some fundamentalist Christians and some Ooh. teenage hoes, <laughs> welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down to party, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. Okay. Tons of content on Patreon. Tons. And plus, it is the best way to support us. Yeah. Now, if you are watching on YouTube, please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because truly every little thing that you do helps us in the algorithm so thank you in advance thank you we're finally at three and a half thousand subscribers on youtube you mean 3500 yeah <laughs> we made it to 3500 i know finally it's taking wow that's like we're almost to 4000 i know maybe we should do a giveaway for 4000 maybe what could we give away trash your cookie yeah like your fat cat my fat cat your razor blade <laughs> Stop. should we have a raccoon only fans <laughs> that would be so fantastic oh my god that's never gonna happen no never no but don't get your we'll hopes think up. about it but well, maybe for five thousand five thousand is a nice number yeah. on youtube so help us out everybody Please. and again thank you in advance thank you now i understand that we have somebody who called in as it concerns the Plaths slash Sister Wives. Yeah. They called into our speak pipe. And by the way, you can do the same thing. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You can leave a message for us up to 90 seconds. Tell us everything you want to tell us. It's yeah. free and we'd love to hear from you. So who we called? Um, let's see. Clarissa slash Claire. I okay. think she called last week. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's got another um, like fun question for us. Okay. Hi, Delia and Beatrice. This is your fan, Clarissa or Claire from Brussels. Uh, this time I have another question about the Plath family, but with a Sister Wives twist. So in a Sister Wives universe, which members of the Plath family would be which members of the Sister Wives family? So, for example, is Lydia the early seasons Christine of the Plath family? Um, does that make Kim Cody Brown? And... Who the hell would Barry be? Is he like Mary Brown post worthy up? I don't know. Can't wait to hear your opinions. Bye. That's this, funny. This one's got me thinking because I don't know. Oh, my God. Well, Olivia's obviously Robin. You think so? Oh, well, totes. Olivia and Mariah both have aspects of Robin to me because Robin is such a crybaby. Robin yeah. is inherently emo. I guess. And yeah. dark sided. And so she's like Mariah that way. But she's also very conniving. Like Olivia. And an intelligent designer. Not unlike Olivia. Yeah. 
I do agree that Lydia is probably early seasons Christine, like totally brainwashed and well, like super into everything. Yes, definitely brainwashed. But Lydia strikes me as a bit more grounded. Hmm. Not in reality. I was going to say. <laughs> but just like in her grounded presentation. In, <laughs> in her presentation, she seems more grounded to me than early seasons and later seasons, Christine. Well, but she's not married to Crody Brown. So I mean. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but I mean, I guess that would be the connection I would make. I think for Ethan Plath, I would say Janelle. Really? Well, because I think Janelle represses so mm. much. Yeah. I think she has a lot of emotions inside of her. I think totally. she's feeling very big things. But we really don't see a lot of that, at least in the seasons that we've been covering yeah. here in the beginning. But also toward the end, except for maybe last season and a little bit in the season before that, she's kind of quiet. She kind of tucks it all down and tamps it all in. Totally. I'm seeing some Ethan and Janelle That would make a lot of sense. They're both Tauruses, too. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah. they are. So that would make sense. What Who's if, Cody Brown, then? Cody. Oh, I mean, gosh. I feel like Kim Plath isn't as bad as Cody Brown. I know that's controversial, mm. but I feel like Cody Brown is like the worst of the worst. Yeah, there's hard to it's hard to find somebody in the Plath family that would correlate with Cody Brown. But I don't know, Kim might be it. Um, yeah. She's not as charismatic to me as Cody. Yeah, but she's diabolical. And she's also a straight up malignant narcissist who is not self aware at all, like Cody Brown. Yeah, but like Kim comes from trauma. So it's like, she just needs fucking therapy and needs to stop drinking. And eating sugar. Yeah, but like Cody Brown also comes from trauma. If you think about it, he's got his own culty religious trauma. He was yeah, always vying for the attention of his father. Yeah. And I think when what I hear in the rumor mill, like he was kind of a hard man, certainly yeah. a hard man to please. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm guess. just I'm just not saying that he didn't have any trauma. He probably yeah, did. Maybe. I don't know. What about Barry? God. <laughs> Who's Barry's, Barry's Corlett like such an in the Brown family? I don't know. Um, Savannah? Maybe. Because Savannah's, Savannah's kind of robotic. She's kind of robotic. Yeah. Or like, I mean, I guess McKelty, but McKelty's so annoying. McKelty? I don't know, There's... because like Barry's kind of weird and obnoxious. Like, especially in the earlier seasons, he's kind of just like weird. Oh I don't see that at all, but that's interesting. I don't know, man. I think this is a fun question. Yeah. So if you're watching on YouTube, let, let us, us know, know what your thoughts are. Yeah. Who in the Plath family could fill in in the Brown family and or vice versa? Yeah. Fun. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. In Brussels. Oh my God. International. International raccoon. God, we're famous. All right. Let's get into Welcome to Plathville, Season 6, Episode 4. Yeah. Entitled, You're Like a Stranger to Me. Uh, oh, God. Gasp. So this episode was kind of light, but not really, because we only have like two major things. Like we have the kids in Minnesota, Ethan, Mariah, and Olivia. And then we have Micah and Kim and the little girls in Falowita. Right. That's basically the two segments. So we start in Minnesota with Olivia driving from L.A., Back to the apartment because she's going to make Ethan sign the divorce papers. And she's kind of talking about like how she feels about it, how she's kind of waning between frustration and feeling bad for Ethan, but not really. She doesn't really feel bad for Ethan. No. And she wants to get this done. It has now been nine months since mm -hmm. they formally separated. Yeah. She is ready to move on with her hot girl winter. Fair. And she wants her freedom to do so. Yeah. And so, Ethan, you're going to have to sign those papers and you're going to have to divide the property. I guess she left some things behind. Shocker. She thinks Ethan can have like most of it, but there are a few things that she would like to take with her. I'm wondering what those things are. I know. The sailboat? I'm curious. <laughs> the vehicles, the money yeah. in the safe. I don't know. Oh, God. But we're not going to know because that's not until next week, I guess. I hope we get to see a lot of Me that, too. though. Because I want to see them kind of fight over shit. Yeah. I know it's so toxic. It is. You're very toxic. <laughs> I yes. just want to see them fight. But she's talking about how Ethan has been texting her like every few weeks talking about how he misses her and how he still loves her and they wish they could get back together and she doesn't know what to do with that. She feels bad, kind of, but not really because she's mad at him for just kind of dragging his feet, which I'm like, okay, 
but he's like sad. He doesn't want to divorce you. And he said no last time, but he's going to say yes this time. Like you're right. going to get it finalized. It's so like chill. Yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of divorces as the expert in this area, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, nine months is not a big deal. You're going to no, sign right. the papers and then you're going to have to file it and maybe it'll take a few more months. And then, so a year is fantastic. I think with my second marriage, we were separated and ultimately not divorced for one, two, three, four years. God damn. Yes, four years, bitch. Oh, my God. It was a long time. So she's actually on a fast track. She just doesn't know it because she doesn't have the experience of a woman in my years. <laughs> of course. And I mean, it is fair, like, to be a little frustrated, sure. to, like, be impatient because she has been done with the marriage. So, like, I'll give her that. You know, she's allowed to feel whatever she feels and stuff. And then we have Mariah... And Lydia, I guess, is up there as well, visiting family. But Mariah and Ethan go to the bar to have some drinks, except Ethan's not drinking right now. Which I think is something that we should talk about uh -huh. because Olivia has said in roundabout ways, not super directly, that she's a bit concerned about Ethan's drinking. Yeah. And so I think it's very curious that he has stepped away from the booze for right now, maybe so he can think clearly mm -hmm. maybe he understands there's a problem or maybe he just doesn't want to socially drink with mariah which is mariah like this is what she ends up thinking it's yeah like, well, my god i'm just turning 21 i want right. to sit down with my big big brother and i want to have a drink and he's like nope i just want coffee yep so she gets a beer and she didn't know that he wasn't going to be drinking so she kind of felt bad a little bit for even suggesting it but i do think it's like good of ethan to not be drinking because if he is yes kind of like an angry or emotional drunk like that's good. that shows a little bit of self-awareness to be like yeah i'm not gonna drink you know what i mean agreed but whatever and then at the bar mariah talks to ethan about how she's feeling bad about how things happened with olivia how she doesn't want to be angry anymore and she wants to apologize to her she texted olivia asking to meet up while she's in minnesota and she's kind of like getting ethan's vibe vibe check mm -hmm. on the whole situation and ethan seems fine with it he's like i don't care do what you need to do yeah i wouldn't say he's overly encouraging no. to mariah to like go and settle that and do what you think you need to do but i feel like he's mildly supportive mm -hmm. he doesn't have a problem certainly with his sister talking to his soon-to-be ex-wife yeah probably feels good that they're going to make things right hopefully yeah and we have the flashbacks from prior seasons of Mariah talking some shit about Olivia and blaming her for stealing her music. And so that's kind of what she's wanting to apologize for. And then we have the ultimate conversation with mm -hmm. Olivia and Mariah. So they meet up. It's kind of weird. Olivia's totally sussing it out. She's not right. really like expecting anything. She doesn't trust Mariah anymore doesn't really like her, but doesn't really overtly say that. It's kind of implied, though. I think she's trying to give the appearance that she's open to what Mariah is saying, but I think that she's definitely suspicious, and she yeah. actually says that when they ultimately sit down. And I think that she has her guard up, mm -hmm. and she doesn't know. I don't think Olivia knows whether Mariah has the intellectual slash emotional capacity to specifically like enumerate the things that she wants to apologize for. So she's not expecting that necessarily, maybe hoping for that. And she also says that she doesn't feel like she really needs closure. Like she got that. It's already done. Yeah. Like she's moved on. But mm, if not this really. is something that Mariah needs for mm -hmm. her own mental health and her own emotionality, I'll be okay to meet with her. So like there's just there's just this position, this energetic position from Olivia of like somewhat emotional superiority. Yep. Like you know, I'm going to show up um, so that you can do what you need to do. But like, I know what your character is and I've got your number. So there was just something that was a little bit icky about it. Yep. But I again have to remind myself, these are young girls trying to figure out life. And so I've done worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would not have Me been too. capable of sitting down and talking to somebody like that as no maturely way. and articulately. So I give them both props. I do too. And I actually am going to say for the record. Oh my God. For what? all the raccoons who think that I hate Olivia 100% of the time. I actually didn't mind her in this episode. Mm -hmm. Like I actually was kind of on her side for a bit until <laughs> I saw her Instagram posts just this week after the episode aired. So Olivia posted some 
kind of shady Instagram graphics on her story. Like they were about dysfunctional families calling out the plaths, basically. And then some infographics from, you know, fake Instagram therapists talking about what it means to actually apologize. And if you're only apologizing for yourself, it's not a true apology. So she's like throwing shade to Mariah Mm -hmm. in her Instagram stories right now. But then in this scene, when she's talking to Mariah, she's giving her the benefit of the doubt. She's telling her that she loves her. They're giving each other hugs. They're going to climb on the Mm. grain mills afterwards. And it seems like they're getting a little bit of closure. And so I wanted to believe Olivia. And then after that, you post this shit on Instagram. Well, maybe something has happened since then. Maybe. I mean, it's been several months since they've actually had this sit down. Eh. Maybe there's been an additional falling out. But it does seem really petty, like on the night that the show airs, when Mariah, I do believe personally that Mariah is trying to do her best to give a heartfelt apology, even Agreed. though I think it's not great. Technically, She's as far 21. as apologies go it's not great but like she's trying to do her best i think it's pretty shitty to do something like that yeah but she has been doing stuff like that for many months on instagram so par for the course and that's kind of my problem with olivia because you portray this image on camera that like you're trying to be forgiving and trying to like understand where people are coming from and try to give people grace and then you do this stuff again publicly on your own instagram when none of the other plaths are doing that like in fact Mariah hasn't posted anything else about Olivia except for her song Circus, which is really bad. And we reviewed it on Patreon, by the way. We did. Um, oh my God. <laughs> it's really bad. And actually, you remember that Instagram post that all of the Plath kids posted like last year about the credit card yes. thing saying that Olivia lied and blah, blah, blah. Um, Mariah removed it from her Instagram. The other Plath kids have kept it, mm-hmm. but Mariah got rid of it. So she's not posting anything bad about Olivia and yet Olivia feels the need to kind of throw her under the bus on Instagram to make herself look perfect and great. I don't know. Yeah, no, I understand your point. I just wonder if there's something there that we aren't privy to necessarily. But like, if I can just veer us off a little bit, because you mentioned the post that the kids made last year about the credit card. Mm -hmm. Like, I personally feel that they were 100% justified in doing so because Olivia made a public statement about Kim. And we can argue all day whether that statement was true or not. Kim says, well, she doesn't really say much about it, but the way they want us to believe as the audience is that it's not true. Um, Ethan and Olivia said it was true. So I tend to believe it. But nonetheless, Olivia made that statement publicly. And so it's perfectly fair, in my opinion, that all of the kids, if they want to make a public statement, agreed um, in reaction to that, like they can go ahead and do that. That's not like something that they did against Olivia. It's a response to something that Olivia did to them and their family in their perception, which I can understand. Yep. Where I thought Mariah's apology made sense was for her coming so hard at Olivia, accusing her of stealing her music mm-hmm. and being real stink about it, not giving Olivia grace or the benefit of the doubt, just kind of going you know, straight from zero to 10 for no reason at all. Um, And I think Mariah did that because she was in a season of her life when she was kind of waking up Mm -hmm. to the influence that Olivia has had on her and realizing, oh, this bitch is only my friend. She's only my best friend when I am standing against my family. But the moment I kind of want to hang out with them more, I want to go to Joshua's grave. I want to forgive my father and my mother. Then we start seeing the relationship itself begin to wobble. And now I'm not so much in her favor and I can feel that. And so She's waking up. She's also getting pissed off about it because maybe she understands that she's a bit of a pawn in this game in terms of Olivia playing chess the entire time, I believe. So she had a reaction. It wasn't good. I appreciate that she's here to apologize for it. Me too. I don't think she did a great job with that apology. And we can say she's young and that would be correct. But I mean, you could have been a bit more specific. You could have said, you know, this thing I did that was wrong. What I should have done is this. And in the future, if anything ever happens like that again, this is what I'm going to do instead. I'm really sorry. I should not have done that. That would have been better. But again, she's 21 years old. Yeah. And at the same time, Mariah is also saying she doesn't really want to hash out like all of the specifics of what happened because 
we already did that on public TV. We did that in season five and four. And it was kind of crazy. So I, I understand where she was like trying to come off. I don't think it was a perfect apology by any means. But I think like her not wanting to hash it out on camera with Olivia was somebody who is probably a viper when it comes to arguments. Like she probably would have gone in for the kill with Mariah and she would not have known how to handle it. And then it would have been a total mess. I think she was just trying to be like, even keel and be like i'm sorry for how i treated you i'm sorry for Mm. how it was wrong blah 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 yeah i don't really like that because you you can't do shit to people and then just offer a blanket apology and expect them to accept it expect them to just take it like no you did all of these things specifically like these Mm -hmm. 10 things this is what you have done to me and so if I'm going to sit here and listen to you give a general apology and I want to counter that with yeah but can I explain how I want to feel can I explain my perception of what happened if that's going to then cause you to like not be able to talk about it Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like sometimes people apologize to us but they don't actually give us space to respond I actually have someone in my life a very very close person who honestly did something to me that was it cut really deep and they didn't intend to hurt me but it was extremely hurtful they didn't realize they did it to me for years and i never brought it up because i didn't want to damage the relationship but when they finally realized oh that was so fucking shitty what i did they called me up one night and they said i just have to tell you something do you have a moment i'm like sure i had no idea i had no preparation and then they proceeded to apologize really quickly and bring up this hugely emotional thing that truly did hurt me in the past. And I wanted to respond, but then they said, okay, I gotta go, I love you, bye. Like no space for me to be in that moment with them. It really wasn't even about me. This is an apology that, and Olivia actually calls this out. She does, She's yeah. like, this is an apology for Mariah. It's not necessarily the kind of apology that I need that would heal this relationship. And that's kind of what happened to me. This person is of course still in my life. Um, And I've just kind of let it go because you can't make anybody take responsibility in the way that you need them to. You can't make anybody love you the way that you think that you love them. You can only handle your reactions and your responses to that. But it's shitty, man. It's shitty because I wasn't able to say, yeah, that really hurt me. And this is how it affected me. And this is how it changed this relationship. Can we heal these certain things, do you think? I didn't even have a place in that conversation. See, that sucks. Yeah, And I mean, I get that for sure. I mean, in like, on Olivia's point of view, she's saying like, yeah, you did these things that were pretty shitty to me. um, But I also understand because I was once your age and I messed things up and I feel like nobody gave me grace to be young and Okay, 25 year old Olivia, you're not like, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. But I mean, she, she is kind of trying to like give Mariah grace in this moment, which I think is actually a mature position to be like. In a kind of a condescending way I mean, a little bit, but like, well, it is condescending because Olivia is still not acknowledging the things that she did when she was young that were wrong. Like she's also very fucking vague and will say, I messed things up, but doesn't say exactly what you messed up. Correct. So so let's get there in this conversation because Olivia, it's not like you didn't do anything here either it's not like you didn't pull some major shit in jamaica jamaican me crazy season four it's not like you didn't sit in the car during joshua's uh, memorial ceremony and that was not something you did just to ethan it was something that you also did to the rest of the family that was standing around that day there's a lot of things that you did at the river the shit that you did at the river at the end of season four so by the time we get to season five mariah and she's pissed and she's being stupid and writing a burn book song like there's a reason mariah is there there are things that you have done to mariah this is the moment where Mm -hmm. you take responsibility for the shit that you did and if you want to teach her to apologize how about doing it as a demonstration exactly and being the example and apologizing for the legit shit that you did but the way she holds herself her imperious countenance it's like she's done nothing wrong yep and i'm just going to be the benevolent monarch and forgive you little girl because i was 20 once as well okay bitch miss me with that even then she's not even really forgiving she's just saying i get it that's not the same as forgiveness like true forgiveness is like Being like, you know what? What you did hurt me, but I forgive you because I understand shit happens. You were young. We were dumb. Let's just let bygones be bygones and actually let it go. 
But to this day, she's still not letting it go because she's still trashing the plaths at every point she can on her Instagram. So it's like the, a lot of people are coming for her on Instagram being like, if you're over them, why are you posting about them? Like, chill the fuck out. It's all because she's concerned about like how people are perceiving her and she's concerned about people attacking her character because she feels like she's in the right. And I get that. But there's so many people that are like pro Olivia. So just shut up. Just stop trashing the plaths be over and done with it Mm -hmm. she can't though no she can't and even in the acceptance of mariah's apology she's making a dig well i was once young and super dumb like you were too (laughs) and nobody gave me the grace to make mistakes and she's saying specifically nobody in your family Mm -hmm. when i was trying to figure my shit out gave me the grace to make mistakes or to do something wrong so i'm gonna do what wasn't done for me by you and your family like she's still blaming yep. in the acceptance of this apology which does show me that she is unhealed in many yep. ways and she's kind of hanging on to this wound that she has um totally. and i also think she's really really invested in her online persona yeah of like and somebody called it out on reddit i don't know if you saw this uh comment somebody said that Um, Olivia is really happy where she is. She doesn't want to be off the show because she's cultivated or curated this audience of women's activists, Mm -hmm. you know, like these progressive activists who see her as doing no wrong. And the minute you kind of try to have a nuanced conversation about, well, Jamaican me crazy though, Uh right? And Joshua's memorial, like the minute you try to say anything, like people just go crazy. Oh, yeah. It's a really, really crazy response. Um, And I think maybe Olivia likes that. I think maybe Olivia likes having stands. Yep. Like, it's interesting to me, Beatrice, because the first three episodes, I was feeling like, oh, Olivia, I like this you. Like, I like what you're doing. I like your journey. And you really didn't. Mm -mm. And in this episode, you're like, I liked how Olivia handled that. And I really, I really didn't. Like, her interstitials, her to the camera conversations when she's calling out Mariah's character. I'm like, we don't r- really need to do that. Mm-hmm. Just like me, I didn't really need to take the person who was apologizing to task and right. let them know everything that was wrong with them. I was able to just love them and accept it. Like, uh, Olivia, you might want to check yourself. Yeah, 100%. And she that's the lack of self-awareness that we always talk about with Olivia because she portrays herself to be so enlightened and healed and like she's super progressive and all of these plasts are all dumb and hillbillies and they don't know what they're talking about. It's like, girl, it's I true. mean, it's kind of true. <laughs> but at the same time, like, <laughs> look at yourself in the mirror. Like, we can all have our own blind spots. Like Kim and Barry have said, Olivia's got some blind spots that she doesn't see in her character and... She does. I see them. I see them. The raccoons, we have monocles. We see things. The plainest day. And then in the conversation, too, Olivia kind of plays to Mariah's emotions. I don't think it was, like, super malicious when she said this, but she does kind of play the emotional field here where she's like, I just want you to know, I really loved your brother. And then cries. And I really loved you, too. You were like a sister to me. But I loved you. I don't love you anymore. Past tense. Essentially. And then Mariah says, I loved you too. Past tense. We can't gloss over the burn book comment, though, because Olivia does call Mariah out correctly. So if you ask me and she's like, well, I'm open to like what you're saying here, but it's not lost on me that you're also releasing music this week, which is essentially a song directly about me in which you have this major, very cringe catharsis moment in your lyrics. And it's basically a burn book against me. So how can both of these things be true? Why are you okay to release that song, but you also want to have this moment of forgiveness with me? And that's a fair point. Yeah. But like also the song Circus is like not that bad. Like I listened to it again today and it's like, no, I'm not, I'm saying it's not that bad in terms of to Olivia. Oh, oh like I it's a bad a song. Of music. <laughs> no, I'm like, it's, what? <laughs> it's a horrible song. <laughs> because then we had to be subjected to hearing it again. It was so bad. Oh, so bad. Lord, again, we, help us, we covered it on Patreon. But it's not like it's so bad calling Olivia out directly. Like Mariah's talking about give me the freedom to change. Like I'm a person. I just realized I don't want to be on your ride anymore and let me live my life uh, as a forgiven rebel. Like, it's not that bad. Like, Olivia's treating it not. like it's a fucking burn book. It's so horrible. It wasn't that. And she l- totally listened to it and memorized the lyrics. She did. She <laughs> quotes from that song at Girl. the end of their conversation. 
And I thought Mariah's uh, response was fair. Yeah. She's like, well, that was where I was one year ago. That was a part of my process. And yep. I dare say, like, had I not let all of that... Sh- I'm speaking for her because she's yeah. dumb. Yeah. But had I not let all that <laughs> shit out, like, I wouldn't be in the space that I am now mm-hmm. here sitting with you having this conversation. Like, I had to off-gas all of that. I had to process it. And music is my gift. God. It's my talent. It's how I do that. It's my process. So you dumb. were my muse. So dumb. And so Olivia accepts that. Not and really. Right. I mean, she's... Can we... Also. What? Olivia is so pretty. I know. She's driving to the farm. Every dude, time. And the light, the way the sunlight hits her face and her jewel toned eyes so and i'm beautiful. a straight heterosexual but i'm like how can any man not fall in love with I mean, olivia or a lesbian woman not unlike yourself like no, she's like beautiful and mariah gorge gorgeous stylish so beauteous. pretty especially now that she's not like wearing all that makeup but have you seen her recent instagram post no of course not omg she posted a photo like a professional photo okay, she got you'll taken. send it to me we'll put it right we'll here. put it right here okay <laughs> and someone dm'd us on instagram saying what in the orthodox jew is going on here because what? her curls literally looked like <laughs> it's so bad no. i'll show it to you after the pod okay we'll right share now it, but should I'll... i show it to you right now okay yeah let's just take a little pause and show me let me just show you so okay. you can see what you're talking what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah uh, oh god does she have a she doesn't have a stylist right like there's not uh, no it's her somebody who's intentionally it's all her oh my she just needs one of those little boxes on her head i know oh my god it's Mariah. really bad i mean god bless you but <laughs> girl not a good look it's uh, not the best look i've seen better looks i think her looks in this season i would say they are better than the definitely. canon of mariah looks that we have experienced thus far that's now that's what she did now <laughs> so her look in this season is so much better i wish she'd go back to it but yeah well maybe she just was having a day but like, finding i herself. like i like the brunette i think she's very she's very beautiful both of these girls are very beautiful yes they end their conversation by making some jokes giving a little hug and then they both go ahead and climb up those grain mills or yeah whatever and they sit up there and i kind of got misty beatrice i did too i'm like this is a wholesome moment yeah. i've lost friends too me too i've walked away from people that i thought were so important to me like really good good judy's good girlfriends yep and that's a painful moment and they're gonna walk away from that and they're probably never gonna sit down in the same room again never and that's sad i know and that's why i liked olivia in this episode because i'm like wow this actually seemed like Okay, she seemed to like kind of handle it okay, whatever. She had some snide comments. That's typical. But now it's still, it's like, there's obviously something going on. Maybe we'll get to see it later in the season. Like maybe Mm -hmm. they have more conflict. Or maybe Olivia's just being petty. I don't know. That also tracks for her. Right. If she's unhealed, then she, you know, hurt people, hurt people, Beatrice. Exactly. Well, we did have also Mariah do her interstitial or to the camera interview in which she said that olivia was only happy with her when she was unhappy with her family yeah she said this whole thing was confusing because she's like i feel like olivia's being genuine and is coming from a good place but then at the same time she's saying she loved me but i think she only did when Mm -hmm. i hated my family but it doesn't matter if it's confusing because it might just be like that forever and i just like want things to be okay and like maybe olivia saw that and then made the post i think so but i mean olivia you're in your own talking head talking shit about her character so like oh, can we just leave this behind us now well and again that's your blind spot because yeah you did only love these kids when they hated their family once they started recognizing their parents as their parents you got pissed off mm-hmm. sorry agreed like, i mean that's just what it is so whatever and then we have oh my god are we at like 30 minutes girl every oh time we <laughs> start these pods and she's like let's just have it be 20 30 minutes and then it's like an hour <laughs> every time let's go. we got big mouths anyway so then we have 
the last half of the episode, which is like Florida with Kim and Ken and the girls. We can move through this pretty quickly. Amber's teaching line dancing. Okay. Nobody cares. But she's so pretty. She's gorgeous. She is so cute. And then we have little Mercy. I who's know. like a little Mariah. She's got knee high boots on. She's got a flannel little tied top up tied up. Little... You can see her midsection. The brown girls could never. Could never. She looks so cute. And Cassia. I love Cassia I so know. much. I want to see more of Cassia. I hope Me there's too. support for Cassia. Me too. Such a beautiful girl. So they go line dancing and Ken Palmer is there helping Amber. And I'm yeah. like, you're not a predator, right? I hope not. You're not a predator. I hope I you're not a predator. Know. Because I you know what not. they say about like uh-huh. moms who get into relationships with guys and bring their kids. And then there's usually if there's going to be a predator, it's going to be one of those guys. But Ken Palmer's too old, right? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to. How I don't want to ever think about that. Who am I? I mean, how dare you? I'm just like always stranger danger, though. Yeah, I'm know, always same. stranger danger, and I'm clocking the dudes. Yeah. Because Amber's so pretty, so sweet, and mm-hmm. now she likes Ken, and Ken is like helping her, and I'm side eyeing everything because you know he made those racist posts on Facebook, right? I know. You know that he doesn't have the greatest character, I right? I know. And these girls are so innocent and beautiful. Hashtag protect them. Hashtag protect them. And I'll just go uncensored for a real brief moment. Okay. <laughs> Back from uncensored. Back from uncensored. And if you want to hear all of our uncensored bits, make sure you go to patreon.com slash reality TV cringe because that's for the Patreon raccoons yeah. only. Thank you. I don't know. With Amber, I just had a weird little vibe. Vibe check. Vibe check. Like she said, I didn't like him at first, but now I really like him. And, you know, Kim is obviously pushing Ken on all of her kids. We saw uh-huh. last episode. She's like, Ethan, I haven't seen you in two years. Do you want to meet my man? My fuck boy. My fuck boy. Yeah. Um, and he's like, no. In a pro pro. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how much of Amber's reaction and response to Ken is because Kim is pressuring these little girls to spend time with him. Uh-huh. Which is why Barry doesn't like him. Yep. And doesn't want to be around him or say hi to him when they drop the kids off. Well, and Amber's even saying too, like, I was mad at my mom at first, but now she's my best friend. And then the producers tell that to Kim and Kim's like, oh my God, that's so great. And I'm just like... And she gets misty. I mean, that she healthy? has an emotion in there, I guess. I don't know if that's healthy. I don't either. I'm side-eyeing it. And then Micah comes down to work on his mom's busty-ass boat, who she doesn't know anything about. Like, she doesn't know anything about this boat. Further um, proving my point that she doesn't want to be on a houseboat. Mm-mm. This is a prop for the show. Probably. And or a place that she can take the girls when they don't want to hang out with Ken Palmer. But every other second, every other minute of the day, honey, she's over on that deck. <laughs> Ken Palmer's a dick. <laughs> Old man dick, honey. Ew. She's riding a pony. Gross. She's riding a pony. Disgusting. That's where she wants to be. She just she is not interested in this houseboat. It is booty as hell. It it's doesn't so run. She doesn't know how to turn the shit on. This is all a prop for TLC. They probably paid for it. it probably. It's kind of embarrassing. And the only thing that was interesting about this was like Micah talking to his mom about his girlfriend kind of and how she's like oh yeah i really like her but are you gonna get her some christmas gifts or some birthday gifts because apparently micah's not getting gifts for his girlfriend that he lives with well micah doesn't know how to be in a relationship with anybody that probably means barry never got any presents for kim and maybe kim never got any presents for barry and they're like these fundamentalist christians who probably never had a christmas tree or any presents whatsoever because that's satanic i think they've actually talked about that have they i think they never celebrated holidays so yeah actually oh gosh okay it's already escaped my consciousness but like so micah doesn't know how to do relationships Mm -hmm. we're gonna have to give him some years to figure it out i just don't think this is the girl that you really want to do that because there's already major red flags with whoever she is down there in South Florida. Well, but apparently Kim loves her. Kim thinks no, she's she beautiful. No, she doesn't. She's just trying to convince us that she's changed. I'm not going to treat her like <laughs> yeah. I treated Olivia. I'm going to give her the benefit. I'm going to support her in this relationship because she's beautiful and intelligent and wonderful. Something she never innately felt for Olivia. So she's doing this so that we believe that she's a good mom and she's changed. 
I don't know. Yeah. I don't believe it. I mean, it kind of seems like she has changed a little bit because she's saying she's loosened up with the younger girls in terms of like how they dress and they all have their ears pierced and they have more because freedom. Because what kind of audacity would she have to say as an adulterous criminal who gets DUIs and wraps her trees around, cars around trees, to tell her kids that they can't wear um, cute little boots and a little bit of makeup? With that fucking eyeliner and that lipstick, I mean, you're going to try and tell people about their makeup? I don't think so, kid. And your mini she skirts? She has no parental moral authority over these children. No, and she talks about it. She's like, all my older kids rebelled. So obviously I did something wrong. So I need to just kind of change it oh up a little God, bit. Oh my God, we are sitting here on this day, year of our Lord, 2024, and you're giving Kim some grace. I'm just I saying, only think it's because she reminds you a little bit of your mom. A little bit. And you love your mom because Kim is a whole fucking trash bag of a person. Well, and she is irredeemable. <laughs> In my I opinion. Know. I mean, I, I know Jesus loves her probably. I don't, I don't know. I think she's maybe. a traumatized, troubled woman. And she had a million fucking kids. And she's just trying to figure her life out. And she's okay. going through a midlife crisis. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's perfect. I think she's fucking self-centered as shit. She's got narcissistic tendencies. But I do think she's changing a little bit. She is, obviously. She's letting her kids do whatever they want now. Well, she's making this slow crawl to full-on alcoholism well yeah then that's a change that's a bad change <laughs> I, it's no. not a good change no i don't believe anything that she's serving us um let us know what you guys let think. us know. i mean because i know not everybody is as heartless as we are <laughs> Or the fucking subreddits that absolutely oh my God, hate her. I don't know what they're saying on Instagram or the Twitters about Kim, but I don't believe it. You're 55 years old. That's an old dog, honey. You know what they say about old dogs and new oh, tricks. True. I think she's a manipulator. I think mm-hmm. she's trying to get all her kids to love her new man and yeah, her new that's lifestyle. True. And I just don't believe, I don't believe anything she's giving us. It would probably be better if she was just single. Like if she wasn't with another person and she could actually figure her shit out, go to fucking therapy, not be a drunk. Like, but you hop from one dick to another, and then mm-hmm. you got a houseboat. Yeah. And now you're forcing your kids to love your new man and all this shit. And you're speaking as if you're divorced. Right. In this episode, I'm like, you haven't even filed divorce. I know. Like, I don't think you guys have even filed divorce uh, until like June of 2024. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but mm. I think that it was only recently that we have a formal filing of any kind. So Kim, you are a married woman. I know. When you're talking to your kids you're at this a time. Hoe. You are an adulteress. <laughs> She's the worst. Shame. For shame. Shame. And then we have the preview for the next coming episodes. Okay. Um, Mariah is going to Kim and asking her for choreography advice in her music video. And it's like some sort of wiggity wax strip teaser or something. Burlesque With stuff. her big old sandals. I can't. Her sandals? What are we doing? Her Clark sandals from DSW Warehouse for a wide-footed woman? I know. No! (laughs) Like, why would you ask Kim of all people? And then we have Micah asking Barry if he's dating, if he's rizzing any of the chicks, and Barry, the AI, learns some slang. Well, he says, I'm dope. And the guy's (laughs) like, that's literally from the 80s. (laughs) It's a little bit of the night. It's old. And he's like, that's already old. <laughs> it's kind of funny. It is kind of cute. Yeah. Total dad moment. Yeah. And then we have Ethan actually signing the divorce paperwork. And Olivia looks sad. She's like crying or whatever. And he leaves. And he's like, this is the last time I'm ever going to see her. And ah. he casts her that glance. He's like, I don't know when, if ever, I will see you again. And I'm going to tell you. That has happened with me and some men just I walking know. away. That is a sad moment. It is very sad. I'm just relating. That's all. Yeah. I feel for him. And maybe the tarot reader's right. Maybe. Maybe in a couple years they'll get back together. That would be so wild. We shall see. Oh, I'd love it. All right. Are you ready to get into Unexpected? Let's talk about these teen hoes. All right. All right. We did not cover Unexpected last week. Sorry because about that. I'm well, priorities. We had an hour long conversation about <laughs> Laughable. I think we're almost at an hour now. God, yeah, sorry. we need some discipline. I know. Especially you. Wow, rude. But we're here to cover last week and this week. We have yep. a few teenagers that we got to get into their ass. I'm going to I want to get into that Emily ass. Girl. I'm ready to get into Emily's ass. Yeah. But you take the reins and you lead. Well, let's start with Kaylee and Graham, because last week it was kind of the talk of the induction, and then this week is the actual induction. Who the fuck is that guy? Becky. Who 
That's I know I'm skipping ahead, but what else is there to talk to? There are things to talk talk about, uh, yeah, but not really. What else are we supposed to be talking about except that rando, meth heady, weird dude sitting up in Kaylee's delivery room? For what? Becky's meth friend Rob. Who is, is he? I think that's her boyfriend. I, think I don't know. They say friend. Banging. Uh, what? Uh, even if it's a boyfriend. Meth friend. Even if it's a close family relationship, it's some rando dude. It's weird. Get the fuck out of my child's delivery room. Mandy, open your mouth. Mandy's such a weak ass bitch. She's so weak. It's so annoying. Like, why don't you say something? Be like, you know what? My daughter's 15 and I don't want you in here seeing her coochie. Yeah, you can say it to the camera, but you can't say it to this weirdo. Is he going to be there when the coochie comes out? I hope not, because that's fucking weird. It's, I'm getting mad. I'm it's getting really rage. weird. So let's back up because. Well, I mean. Basically, just, well, they, they drive over to the hospital. Yeah. Graham's been puking. Yeah. Apparently, that's how Graham deals with his anxiety. I kind of feel bad for him. I do as well. He throws up a lot and he does a whole body throw up. You know who does that as well? Your husband. My husband. God. Violently. It's like he goes into the bathroom on a terrible night of drinking and the entire house shakes from the foundation up from his throwing up. Like, can't you throw up a little more quiet? My dad was like that, too. I think men are just like that. Why? Bizarre. Chill out. So Graham's getting all anxious like a shaky chihuahua. And he's throwing up. But they're all making their way to the hospital. Yep. She's getting induced that day. First, they got to try some procedure where they do something with a string on her cervix. I don't, I don't know. know. It sounds terrible. Sounds horrible. They wait several hours with people coming in and out. And then they finally start her on the Pitocin. And by then, though, Becky's already gone. Oh, I yeah. think Becky waited for like an hour. And then as soon as Kaylee and her dumbass mom went into the bathroom, she bounced. She's she like, had to go okay, do Graham, meth. I got to go. Yeah. Got a pipe. Yep. And a bed. Yeah. <laughs> Calling my name, honey. Bye. <laughs> and then her weird friend Rob is there. Like in place of her. Like, why? Uh, why are you there? I get called up. I get a sawed off. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Seriously. That guy makes me have rage. I don't know why he's there. And he's talking. The pure male audacity. I mean. To be talking to the nurses. To be talking God, to the doctors. To be talking for her. To be talking to her. Get this 14, 15-year-old girl doesn't know who you are, you mm -mm. old weirdo. I know. Uh, God, give me five minutes with people like this. Just five fucking minutes. Uh, for real. I don't, I don't understand why Mandy's not saying anything. And why her husband's not there. Because I feel like her husband would say something and be like, yeah, you know what? Get the fuck out of here. I think he's working on a railroad somewhere. Probably. I don't even know if he's conscious. He's making fully. money for this hospital I visit. So. I, honey, I don't know. That whole family's crazy. But Mandy just sits there and judges everybody. She doesn't open her eyes. She I love clearly it has <laughs> she clearly <laughs> has like a huge problem with Becky. Uh -huh. Every single opportunity she can to the camera, she's talking about Becky. Like, for example, she's concerned that Becky's actually in the delivery room because she's got the bipolar and you never know with the bipolar like what she gonna do yeah as if it's psychosis or something yeah it's not psychosis no. it's gonna be okay well Becky's it is doing all meth. right if it's meth if it's if meth like, bipolar you know I mean, maybe so yeah but like every opportunity she can she's dragging becky mm -hmm. doesn't she know becky's gonna watch that <laughs> doesn't she know that becky is also the co-grandparent and at some point well, in the future you might need becky does I it matter know. I mean, I feel like Becky doesn't give a fuck. Becky's kind of a piece of shit, in my yes. opinion, because, like, she's making fun of Graham for, like, throwing up and being nervous when he's literally talking on the couch, like, I'm nervous because I have school and I have to get a job and my girlfriend's pregnant and about to have a baby and I have to take care of my bipolar meth head mom. And she's just, like, laughing at him. Yeah. Like, she's e not comforting. Even when they're getting into the car, she's like, why am I carrying my own bag? She's, and Graham's like, well, because... It is your it's bag. It's your bag. And she's like, well, you're my son. So clearly she makes him do all of the physical lifting yep. and the emotional and psychological lifting. There's a reason your son is shaking like a chihuahua and vomiting so that the whole house hears it, you bitch. You And like bitch. he's sitting on the couch and he's talking about all of these responsibilities and everything that he's doing for his mother as well. And, and she's, she's just, just sitting there. there listening. Yeah. Because like, she's high. I would turn to him and say my love like i am not your responsibility i am the parent in this situation yeah i love you and i'm here to support you that's your opportunity to do that becky but you're just sitting there completely phased out and unconscious and letting him take responsibility for your emotional and physical well-being yep i hate all these people i hate i them. hate all of these people i hate this 
dude in the in the delivery room. I know. He's such a fucking freak. Five it's minutes. really weird. Five minutes and some brass knuckles and I'll take care of that business. Get Faux show. the fuck. Tell the nurse out to of execute there. him. At, execute. execute. Tell the nurse to exit him out of yes. the room. Thank you. <laughs> for real. I just feel bad for Kaylee too because it's 24 hours after all of this medication that she's given been given to get induced and her th- cervix is still not thinning yeah. and she's still not dilated so it looks like she's probably gonna have to have emergency c-section and that sucks yeah i guess the baby's sunny side up yep. next week at next week's episode and so they're talking about an emergency c-section i don't know if she's going to ultimately get that probably but like as soon as you start the pitocin drip uh things get real yeah and, and the painful. pain is real and yep. so kaylee at this moment in time is just starting the pitocin so she doesn't really know what that life's about no nope. but she's about to know because they're going to make her go through it with the pitocin for a while at least yeah before they come in and do a c-section if they do that yikes wouldn't want to be there no wouldn't not at all do that at 15 Mm-mm. yikes no and then we have anaya and dj and i'm Snorri. Same here. We last had a big old week, RV. Well, last week it was oh. all about the christening and stuff like that. Don't care. Don't care at all. Do not care. And then this week it's the RV. Also don't care. With her grandparents. And Day Day has a promise ring. Well, her grandpa was in the Navy for 20 years. I really liked sweet. him. He wore a suit to drive I the know. RV that to the restaurant. That was really cute. They went to like some little restaurant. That was, was so like, cute. This is adorable. But it's all about Day Day. Yeah. We have Ashley admitting that Day Day is actually better than most guys her age when it comes to their children. Mm-hmm. Day Day in the most unpracticed and immature, God bless him, 17 year old 17 year old boy way pulls out a box with a ring in it and just says, Here, look at it. <laughs> Open it. And she's like, What is this? And he's like, It's a promise ring. And just like JJ from a couple episodes ago, Everybody's asking, well, what's the promise for? And he's like, well, I don't know. Just promise to be with you. And they're like, is it a promise to marry? And he's like, well, I don't know about all <laughs> no, that. No, it's a lot for Like me. that kind of commitment, I'm not necessarily ready for that. Yeah. But he is ready to sign up for the Air Force. Mm-hmm. Let me just tell you, raccoons. Let me tell you, Beatrice. This house likes the Air Force. Yes. We got some Air Force soldiers up in here yep we like the air force i think that's a good choice for this young man he wants to do air traffic control because it makes a lot of money it makes a lot of money he doesn't know what it is no he doesn't know necessarily how to do it or anything yeah. but he just wants those benjamins and so that's what his plan is but i kind of like that for him Me but too. anaya is like i want to be cooped up with my my man and my child i want us to be together like if you leave and get deployed, I'm not going to see you. Right. But I'm like, does he want to be around you and your mom, though? Your mom, who hates men mm-hmm. <laughs> and hates Day Day. She is a straight up misandrist. I mean, she totally hates men. And even Anaya calls it out on the couch because she's like, yeah, my mom is kind of trying to be nice to Day Day, but my mom doesn't even talk about our fathers. She doesn't acknowledge that she's got baby daddy. She wants nothing to do with them. She hates them. And Ashley laughs about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's shitty because yeah. those are your kids' fathers. Like they deserve to have a relationship with them and not have their mom constantly saying, "Oh, they're pieces of shit and they suck." I mean, maybe they are. He who shall not be named. Yeah, maybe they are. Maybe Ashley is the way that she is because she's had a lot of terrible relationships with terrible men who have treated her terribly. That's but like fair. you're literally raising your daughter to mistrust and hate men yep. and now we know year of our lord 2024 that day day and anaya are no longer together and she's up on tiktok 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 <sighs> all the time dragging him yep yeah. constantly and defending her toxic af mother her piece of shit mom and as the cycle goes and then we have emily and nate and this bitch is annoying i really don't like her Mm-mm. She's pissing me off. I haven't because liked her from the beginning. Nate, I feel like out of all of these boys. He's a little angel. Is really trying hard to be a good boyfriend, to be a good dad. He wants to be present. And he's 16 motherfucking years old. Yep. And he still has to go to school. And he's trying. And yet it's never good enough for Emily. And like, I feel for her because she never had a mom. She's like trying and she's probably kind of a type A person. So she's like pissed off when people don't do it her way but like girl 
chill. Yeah, I think it's all generated, though, from this fear of abandonment Mm -hmm. and this need to be able to control the people around you so that they never actually leave you. Yeah. And so then you have this hypervigilance in this control and you inevitably push them away, which you're going to do with Nate. He's just too young right now. He doesn't know what a spine is or a backbone, but he's going to get there. He's going to become a full on man. And if Taryn sees to it, she's going to be protecting her son. Uh Uh-huh. And Taryn is clocking it all. Like even just leaving the hospital last week with their son, like Nate forgot her Emily's phone. phone in the hospital. He said he had it, but he didn't. But like, he's like, okay, my bad. There's a lot going on, Emily. Sorry. I don't know if you caught up. Yeah. But there's a lot going on. He happened to make a mistake and she just kind of rolls her eyes and sighs and berates him and puts him down is critical. And Taryn is looking at her in the rear view mirror like, Bitch, I'm watching you. Uh huh. That's my son. And you get a little bit of grace because you just had a kid, but you better tread lightly. Mm-hmm. And so in this week's episode, it's two weeks after that. Yep. We have Emily ensconced in bed. She's trying to get Nate up to go to school. Nate's tired as fuck because I think Emily believes he should do 90% of the diapers. All of the diapers. All of the diapers. Yeah. So he's up in the middle of the night changing diapers. Yep. Even though he has to go to school, yep. but he does not have a license. Yep. I imagine Taryn works, so she can't drive him. So mm-hmm. Emily has to get off her. But unfortunately, I mean, she does have a newborn. And I I'm sure it's sucks. a lot. But yeah. like, this is your lot in life. This is what you chose to do. And so now here we are. You got to get up with your man. You got to put your kid in the car seat. You got to take him to school. But like mm-hmm. the entire way there, she's disappointed in him. She treats him like a child. She treats him like shit. As if she's mature and an adult. And she, like, won't even drop him off, like, at the school. She drops him off on, like, the outskirts. And she's like, there you go. And he's like, okay, well, I'll be out at 1.30. And she's like, well, I'm not picking you up. He's like, mm-hmm. well, wh- what do you mean? Like, I kind of need a ride. Like, nobody else is going to pick me up. She's like, well, I'm not doing it. It's not fucking fair that I have to do all of this. And it's like, well, girl. It, it, it is. You slept with a 16-year-old after two months. You didn't use protection. And you got pregnant. And like, you chose to keep your child. God bless and everything. But here we are and now you guys have to work together and i think nate is trying as much as he can i'm not trying to be a male sympathizer out here but i mean he's just a child like okay i'm a parent i can see this boy's a child so is emily but like she's just toxic dude she's she's just totally animated by her traumas and Mm -hmm. she doesn't see her part in it and she does not know how to moderate her own behavior it's not going to end well although i think they're married i think they are married they're married so maybe it's never gonna last get over it i don't know it's never gonna last probably Please, not no they're gonna try though i hope she's in therapy she needs therapy for years yes years she 100 percent does we have lily do we even want to talk about her no i don't care boycott they have the flu who Nobody cares? cares and then we have jenna this was very interesting juicy juicy so juicy juicy so jenna is in myrtle beach and myrtle. she gets a call from the courts or whatever because aiden filed emergency custody so she has to drive her happy ass back to altoona pennsylvania <laughs> and go to court to basically fight with him i guess for custody but doesn't work out in her favor because the judge sides with aiden and they didn't even like get to put out any evidence or like show anything or argue a case like the judge just talked to the lawyers and sided with Aiden 100 Mm percent so now Aiden gets every other weekend right every Wednesday from 4 to 7 p.m and every other Monday from 4 to 7 p.m so therefore she can't live in Myrtle right for the time being and of course I immediately whatsapped you and said good bitch (laughs) I know like This child should have access, consistent access to his father who allegedly wants access to him. So this is for the best interest of this child. But I mean, I do think Aiden is doing this just to screw with her because as Jenna tells it, it wasn't until she started posting JJ and Luca and her in their apartment down in Myrtle. (laughs) <laughs> that Aiden started having a problem with it. And she reminds us that she actually struck a deal with Aiden months ago where he did not have to pay child support in exchange for her being able to move to Myrtle Beach. And you know what? I completely 
believe her. Uh-huh. I think he absolutely struck that deal. But I think in the back of his mind, he's thinking, move all the way down there. Yep. Get settled and established. And as soon as you are, I'm going to sue you for custody because it's not in writing because you're dumb. That's what I think. I think Jenna's so fucking stupid. I don't think she got any of it in writing. And so she's like saying, well, the judges like didn't even want to look at any of our evidence. And I'm like, okay, your evidence is probably that he doesn't show up for anything, which is probably true. Maybe it's some text messages and where they talk about it. Or maybe like the times where he just doesn't answer her calls. And so she ends up having Luca for the weekend anyway. So Aiden's not actually um, following through with his custody. So like maybe that was the evidence. But like, if you had a written agreement mm-hmm. where he signed and said, I will give up my child support so you can move to Myrtle Beach. I relinquish my custody. It would have been no contest. The judge would have been like, fuck you, Aiden. You signed this agreement so you don't get no emergency custody. Mm-hmm. But no, she's dumb. So now she has to fight with this fuckhead. And she even says at the end of the episode, like, we're spending so much money mm-hmm. on all of these lawyers. And imagine... If we just use that money for Luca, like, or set up a college fund for him, he would have so much money. Like, and she's actually right. so much money. And that's the lament of many divorcing and divorced people. Yep. The amount of money that it takes to negotiate these types of arrangements. But I was just, I was just, <laughs> I'm like, I girl. kind of laughed a little bit. I mean, she, she's crying. She's going off on her father as she always does. And her father is just enabling her yeah putting up with her tantrums but like she's pulling out into traffic she's getting honked at Mm -hmm. but she's really really upset she starts to cry she tells us that she doesn't ask him for a thing she doesn't want anything from aiden well that doesn't matter if you don't want anything from aiden yep it's about luca it's about this child i wouldn't be a bit surprised if she did relocate to altoona pennsylvania which i don't believe she ended up doing i don't believe so maybe i'm wrong Please correct me if I am. But if she did move back to Altoona with Luca, I don't think Aiden would even exercise his custody rights. No. I honestly think he's just doing this to fuck with her, but Mm -hmm. she's been so casual about it and dumb about it that she's going to have to let him. I know. And that's what sucks about it. Because I think she genuinely does have Luca's best interest at heart. Like she wants to give him Mm. a good life. No, I think she does. Mm. She's with another man though. Well, but she's completely discarded Aiden. Well, she's tried to get Aiden to be included in his life. Aiden's the one that just doesn't give a fuck. Doesn't answer her calls. Doesn't actually show up for custody. So like it's all Aiden, I think. I know Jenna's like a dramatic little brat. I get that. But like I think she's trying with a fuckhead like Aiden and JJ who like actually cares about Luca and actually does want to be a father figure in his I life. I do believe that. So I think Aiden's totally being petty for why. I don't know why. I would love to watch some Just of the earlier seasons. Yeah, you know, he was always such an asshole. I would to love her. to see that. He was so terrible to her. God, he's such a piece of dog shit. But this is what happens when we lay down with people. And this is why we need to be teaching yep. children like what sex ed is really about. It's not just about the pee pee goes in the vajiji. Mm-hmm. It is about like, okay, but the choice that you make when you lie down with somebody, if something happens and there's always a risk that it can. Hello. This is 18 to 20 to, for the rest of your life. You're going to be connected to this person. There's financial ramifications. Let's talk about it, kids. Yeah. We don't teach kids about practicalities in life or about checkbooks or anything. Nope. So here we are, Jenna. This is the, the consequences. consequences of your actions. Sorry, girl. Yeah. But we'll see how that goes because I think she's actually in Myrtle now. Like, I think mm-hmm. she's like with JJ and they've got another kid because she's also, I think there's like a pregnancy scare in this season. I think she actually is pregnant yep. with JJ's big headed kid. Right. So <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be really dramatic. Right. But we'll see how it, how it plays out. Yes. Do we want to talk about the preview? Yeah, right. Sure. Lily is yelling at Lawrence about his bachelor party and having care. strippers. Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. JJ wants to fight Aiden, which I would love to see. That'd be so great. Okay. Two mediocre skinny white boys duking it out. Okay. I mean. I'm into, I'm here for it. I'm totally down. Um, Anaya is worried that Day Day's going to cheat in the Air Force because she says all men cheat, which I'm like, that's something you get from your mom. That's some toxic but shit. But also in the military, it is true. Well, I mean, On yeah. both sides. I guess. But I feel like if your husband was in the military, he wouldn't cheat. He's a man of integrity. That's true. But a lot of those guys aren't. And a lot of those women at home aren't either. That's true. Yeah. And then we also have Kaylee um, probably needing an emergency C-section, just like Emily. Yep. So I'm worried about her because she's little. 
she's very little i feel bad for her yeah it's traumatic yeah. birth is traumatic yeah. well it was very entertaining yeah. i certainly enjoyed welcome to platful as i always do yes and you know what unexpected is keeping my interest i watched that shit last week i was prepared to talk about it but we I went too it long too. and yeah i'm interested to see what happens yeah throughout this season so i do think we should continue to cover it yeah Beatrice, yeah even though you're a little bit bored I think I'm going to have to force us to do it weekly. Just a little 10 to 15 minute you recap. You just got to remind me. I will remind you. Yeah. My darling. All right. All right. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, Beatrice? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star five. review. It really helps us grow the pod and we really appreciate it. So thank you very much. I actually went up on Apple podcast today to make a screenshot of our most recent podcast to send to somebody who was like, well, where have you guys been? And like, Hello, as if we haven't here. been posting, well, we have been posting and, and you know who you are and we love a raccoon in we Rochester, New York, by the way. Um, but I noticed we have like 4.7% I know. Percent on Apple 4. podcast. Stars. Four, four, I don't know. F- yeah. Stars. <laughs> and I think we have like 360 reviews, uh-huh. which is, by the way, not nearly enough. Yeah. And honestly, more. every single review that you make, Raccoon, really makes a difference to us. It gets yeah. us featured in an algorithm somewhere. Please. I assume I'm a boomer. I don't know these things, honey. No. But please make sure you do leave those reviews please. because they really, really make a difference. Thank you. Now, we will be back next week. Of course honey to talk about sister wives we're Mm -hmm. still in season five we're going to be getting into some polygamist kids in the cult who got out they escaped oh my god so that's going to be awesome make sure you come back for that and until then please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you and peace out Bye. bye guys